Greetings to the house. Beats, Beats, Ha, the nation, the people, Am Ha, Vomari Yahweh and Yoshua Hamashiach. And greet you all in his magnanimous, great, powerful name that must be esteemed among his nation. It must be the greatest of honor given unto his name. For in that powerful name we find the liberation and deliverance. And the promise of the Tikva, Yoshua HaMashiach. And the Tikva of Yah extends beyond any kind of, quote, hope, unquote. Because you can expect it when Yah says it. You can hope all day, but there is no earnestness of an expectation. If it comes, it's all right. And that's why we as a nation, it is vital for us as a people to understand the mind of Yah, to take the time and the patience to understand words. We speak with such ignorance, it is profound. And we resent anyone that instructs us in the right way. Two things I want to mention. I want to say something before Zahin comes. There was a man that wrote today and he made a statement. And I corrected the man. He responded, thank you so kindly for the correction. But awesome. There's a young man that listens down in Florida, not far from the hearts. And so he sent an offering of $100. That's an enormous amount of funds when someone sends those kinds of offerings of help. He said nothing. He wrote nothing. But he responded back to my letter, as I said, we do. Doda, you for your kindness, for this great assistance. His words back to me was, Ya Baruch, Doda, for you have helped me to become a man. You have helped me to become a man. There's one thing about the mindset of a child. They resist any kind of instructions. They always do that. But it's a sure thing about a real man. He understands the beauty and the strength of another real man. And he can hear the real man. But the child doesn't hear father, mother. It hears no one. The child gets upset and antsy, perturbed. You see, a real man doesn't do that, but a child does. A real man will hear. He will hear to understand. You talk to a child, they can respond and tell you what's best. But a man, he ponders and he listens. He listens to the syntax. He doesn't have to understand word meanings. But life and life's wisdom has taught him through experience. And his mouth is quiet and sealed. He listens for the beauty of the conversation. I was speaking to Aksimion and we have a family there. You all have heard me talk about them. Akhwim and his Oho Tiffany. He's a very sick man. I want you all to pray for him. You that are listening, and if we get 0.1% through, that will work because hell, our prayer lives are not worth a damn. I'm going to teach you on that soon, too. And so he called me out of great desperation, his heart. The first thing he said, Riyak, we don't know how much longer time is. He's grievously sick. But I was so impressed with one thing. When I called him back, 
his young daughter answered the telephone and immediately, immediately, not some time after, it changed my whole concept about everything. I could sense the beauty of quietness in the home because they teach their children and homeschool them. I asked him, who was that? Was that Ojo Tiffany? He said, no, it's my daughter. He didn't have strength of breath. He's a young man, like these young men. He said, Riyak, that's, I have a daughter. She's 20 years old. He said, I can only account it to Almighty Yahweh. She still lives with us. She helped her mother, and she's a beautiful daughter. See, when I heard the voice, I knew that there was something of an element there you don't find anywhere. And so it changed my whole heart, my mind, my thoughts, and everything. By the answering of that telephone, by the daughter of Tizayon. He says, my son is 15 years old. And he honors you, and he loves you, and he cares for you greatly. I believe that. I believe that. He said, through all the agony of trials in life, we found you. We began to listen. We began to hear the variations of the teachings that come from this place to assist and to strengthen Yah's house. So we are a people that is, that's so unlearned and ignorant. It is the truth, my Imam. And we don't even know how ignorant we are. We challenge everything. We don't even hear, for a wise man hears the matter and ponders it. Before he even answers, he listens in the Ru'ank. And he knows that when he speaks, that's what the Zachin Im, ah, that's what the men of that age and men that are older men, they should speak and their voices should be heard. It's not just in their voices, but their actions and the activities of their performance. It's difficult to find. It saddens me today. It does because I know I'm getting older and my time is not as long as it was upon the face of the earth. I understand that. I know that. I'm not silly and immature to not understand that. And so I ponder the, the gravity of what I do daily. I won't abuse you, son. I've never abused anyone. I won't even come in your house. Never have. Never have. And I certainly will not dishonor your issue. I don't care what men say. The liars say what they want to. Makes me no different. And so as I'm a student of etymology words and understanding the power of words. It is almost like a man denigrating his issue to a point that it destroys her capability to be sensitivity to anything. He's never spoken a kind word to her. They haven't treated her rightly, right? We don't think that we treat Yah that way because we frankly do not give a damn about each other. We don't love him, and you certainly don't know how to love me. We don't know. I want to define a word I want you all to ponder it for moments. I will not tell you the words. And I want to see if you can tell me what the word is. And then I want to read a verse or two. But one in particularly. To show us our nature and our mindset. I want to define the words not half-heartedly, but thoroughly. With every aspect of its Definitive, with synonyms that are appropriate for the definition of the word. 
that it may cause our minds to think. You see, our minds must be alive. And this is the only record that can keep our minds alive. Nothing else. You must love this book. And the enemy has given you an aversion to it. You don't like it. You don't care for it. It is certainly is not important in our lives. I want to read this. And I want you all to hear me. I will read the definitive and integrate superlatives that support and promote the veracity, the strength, the wisdom and understanding of a simpler word. By the way, it's a four-letter word. So I give you some ups on it. It is when one's eyes or mind is fixed upon it. To think of it often. Regard it or treat in an attentive whose mind is attentive with a great concern in one of the most superlative, uh, kindly fashion and ways. It is to look upon an amazement or gaze upon it steadily or with the earnest of reflection. As you gaze, it is reflected as uh, your sincerity, your nature toward this matter. It is to regard not lightly, but highly. To look upon it attentively. To meticulously, to have this meticulously care of your full attention. And above that, having a full desire and passion. It is also to feel trouble or anxiety. Considered as a matter of relevance of interest or as having a bearing on the issue or events. It is so important that your life and the activities of your life respond around this and looks at it diligently and search one's heart to make sure that one has incorporated all the tenets of this word. Listen to me. It is to be concerned about, to consider with great regards. It is also responsibility, affliction, aggravation, alarm. And a great dismay. It is also burden, anxiety, distress. It can also be annoying or an annoyance. It is pressure and it is tribulation. I want you to ponder that for a moment. To consider the tremendous accolades of that meaning. But I want to read something out of the book. I want you to hear. Don't worry about finding the Kitzve. Zakein will be coming in a moment. Your says by the mouth of the Nobi, the prophet, the messenger, that he commanded to Naba to speak by the utterance, of the power of the Ruach. And that is the witness of Torah that it has a stronghold in one's life, in one's mind. And your witness exude the very veracity of Yah and the variations of his demeanor. We love things that don't touch our sins. But we must touch your sins and show you your corruption and show you the beauty of Yah. There is nothing tough about any of us. We stink. We're full of sin and vileness. Yah says, I have an am, a people, a nation, ones that I have elected. And he uses the word, my people, my nation is an 
avil or aval. It is foolish. When Yah uses the words ev, v e e l, it implies that his people, we despise wisdom. We don't want the hukma of Yah. We despise it. We're self-grandizing. We become angry when one speaks the wisdom to us. We despise wisdom. And above all of that, evil. We mock Yah when we know we're not walking right and doing right. I'm doing right. You're not doing right. We mock Yah. And so when the messenger says anything against or to us, uh, we rise up in the nature of our own foolishness. He said, my people, they are foolish. He said, they have not known, they have not yada. They have not learned of me by the experience of a great passion for Torah. They're you that never even picked the book up because if you don't give a damn about him how can you have any sensitivity to me he said they have not learned we think we understand words definitives and we have not taken the time to learn to educate ourselves that's what the words ayin is ayin the ears is not just the ozin the hearing it is to not only to have the spiritual intellectualness but also the natural as well you're intelligent you think intelligent you look intelligent i'm not going to look like a nick and poots or fool i want to look intelligent nothing to boast in but I'm always ready to answer a man to instruct him in the reason for the tikva that is in me. Because I want the light to shine. He said, my people are evil. They have not learned of me by experience. That's how you learn, yeah, by experiencing his wisdom. They have not even the other. He said, they have not known me. And he uses the word they are sakal, they are satish. They love foolish things. They love to act foolish. They love folly and frivolity and foolish and gesturing and laughter and immaturity. They love that. That's what Yah says. How many will take the time to define a word like I will? Very few. And that's a fact. Because I am that ignorant and unlearned it, I'm not going to pontificate as though I know. What I say something, I know it. What I say it, I know it. I'm not going to pontificate with falsehood and hypocrisy. And that's the way we are. We are sakhal. We love foolishness. We love to turn to foolishness and, uh, and we enjoy the folly. But when it comes to yada yada, to experience him by learning, by hearing, we don't want that. He said they are saltish children and they have no being. They have no intelligence. That's what the words B-E-N-E. -E. It's almost like B-E-A-N. It's B. -E not be no it's been he said they have no intellect they don't understand the profoundness of the order of torah he said that we as a nation we have no he used the words low it cannot even be you can't even give it to them they have no understanding they are not even discreet they don't even know how to discern what not my ears, but their own corruption, vile, evil, sadistic ways. They can tell you everything that's wrong with someone else, but they cannot identify the ills of their corruption, their folly, their foolishness, loving foolishness, loving folly, loving gesturing, and all of those things. And so Akshim reminds us not to be given too much foolishness, why die ye before your time? Shirak says, before you become sickly where your mind doesn't appreciate Yah, 
He said you need to guard your health. And Yah is our Rafa. It is the word that heals us. Yah sent forth his word and it Rafa. It healed the nation, his people. We don't want the word today. Because we frankly don't give a damn. I am not going to stop saying we don't give a damn, all right? He said, we have no understanding, but this is one of the protocols of us. We are wise to do not just ra, but ra'a, an evil. That it is so pronounced that you are already condemned. He has already damned you. It is a just recompense for your sins. We are wise to do evil, but to do yata, to do right what he says, we have no yada, we have no knowledge to do right. We don't even know how to do right. We despise them and we mock them that teach us by the veracity of Torah and show us we are offended because he says, we don't give a damn. And yet we're in the midst of every kind of vowel language. The man wrote in his post that, quote, this guy knows what he's doing, unquote. So I went right to Mariam Dictionary, sent him the definition. Do we look that way? Grotesque, ignorant looking, and foolish? He immediately apologized. I didn't know. I found those that are arrogant. They don't want you to tell them. And I find that among us, no one can tell us anything. Because we're sottish. We're evil. I read the definition of a word. No, I will answer. I will do things in retrospect. I will answer it. I will tell you what the word is. But I want to read this verse. From the mouth directed to his nation. To Ibram the Hebrews, it says this Your commands us and let us consider. Let us consider. To consider is to fix one's eyes and mind upon to think of. It is to have one of the most deepest of devotions of care. C A R because you care because you care because you care when you don't give a damn you don't even think and ponder that's what it is we don't care we don't know how to care we've never been taught your mama didn't teach you how to care and you had no father to show you it is done by the great strength of the ish as he protects and cares for the body, his household, and everything is in order. I must say, I don't know the home of Akwim, but I could sense a great order in that house. I could. I really, really could. Let us set our eyes upon let us consider one another for what? To incite them to provoke one another to great love and the works of love. Our works are evil. They're not works of love. And that's what we should do. We should care for the nation enough. That's why it troubled me when I see old men. And their response, and their responses are not right. But I don't see the level of maturity that I ought to see in an old man or an old woman. Something that troubles me above all things. Nothing else troubles me like that. I, I can tolerate a young man, a young daughter. I can forbear their folly. But an old man, and we that are elderly, I can't forbear that. That troubles me. It bothers me greatly. And because we don't give a damn, we don't care. Then we don't care about provoking one another to great love. And love for the works of Yah, for the power of Torah to exercise itself in our minds and our beings. That when men see us, they can see the light of the great works of Yah shining. 
You can say what you want to. You go to a job. You can tell the ones that are full of folly and the ones that are working. It was one thing that I've always done on job, especially the last job I had. I would never sat and gather with the congregations. I segregated myself and I never took breaks. I didn't take breaks. Didn't need one. Although I got paid for it. I didn't need a break. And I certainly was not going to break with that crowd of people. Because I was distinguished. I segregated myself. I didn't dress like them. I didn't act like them. I didn't carry on like them. You think you're better than us? No, I just do not perform in the same way you do. I have a grave problem with that. We are the ones that dispense knowledge and truth. We are the pattern and the examples. And we ought to provoke one another to the great works of Yahweh. The works of Torah, that their minds, how do you do it? Because if you care enough for me, you will provoke me. You will. When one cares for one, one takes time to show them. I asked one, I said, if you instructed your children in things, why did you do it? Well, I wanted them to know. No, wrong. What they need to understand, no, wrong. You instruct them because you care. And you provoke them by instructing them because your deep care. And when they ponder what you say, the wisdom of that began to become fruitful. And in their life, when they grow older, they will not stray from Torah. They will not go aside from the ways of Yah, from the Derach. That's why we need men to teach us not just verbally, but in their actions and their deeds. And their uprightness and the way they walk and the way they carry themselves. We need the daughters to do that as well. The reason we don't care for each other because we're full of folly. We're wicked. And we don't give a damn. We don't know how to provoke one to tough words. Can I say this, make this statement? The reason I work hard with the Achim, because I want to provoke them. And it provokes them to work like me. Although they work harder than me. But there is no man that will work harder than me. None. And because of their faithfulness, it provokes me to be as faithful to them as they are to me. I could say you do that then. No. That's why I tell many that say they're going to start a work like this, and I will look at them and say, you, you won't be able to do it. You're too old. You don't even have the strength to work. And that's a fact. It takes more than, than the physical activities. It takes above all of that, the man of Yahshua Hamashiach. I will read a few things before you come, please. And I weed in the midst of his great agony unto Yah with complaints. He realized that no one gave a damn about him. And he says this, listen quietly. He says, when my ruach in me was attacked, it was overwhelmed. When I was feeble and sick. When I began to grow weak without any strength within me. Then you, Yada, you knew my pathway. In the way wherein I walked. Have they secretly laid snares for me? They oppose me. They don't care. He said, I look to my right hand. And then I look to my left hand. He says, and behold, there was no man. That's why man is a gem. He's a jewel. That's why man is a gem. There's nothing like a man. He's a gem. He said, I found no man that even Yada know me. He said, refuge, a place to take comfort. It failed me. Why? He said, no man cared. No man darash. He speaks in the first person of Yahshua, Hamashiach as well. 
He said, no one gave a damn. No man. I couldn't find one man that cared for my nephesh. Nobody gave a damn whether I died in my sins or whether I walked in the liberty of the Torah. I know how superficial our minds are and how we've been developed by lies and not understanding what words are. There's nothing more powerful than the words. That's why all these years, you all that have been with me, you very infrequently hear me say the words, I love you. I don't say it. Not that I don't care because it is my actions, as we were saying, the days that speaks louder than words. We don't give a damn. We have not been provoked in the love of Yah. Because we love folly, we gather in folly and frivolity, and we don't care. He says, Zaak, I cried. And Zaak is a prayer and a cry for help, for the Ezra, for the great special help of Yah. He said, I cry to you, O Yah. And I said, You are my refuge, you are my portion. And the land of the living. That's why if you find a friend in this life, you cherish that. You hold fast to it. Because if you've done that, you've done well in this life. You've done extremely well if you find one. We don't know how to care. We've been taught lies from our birth. You know, Ach Yosipiya, I'm thinking of the word dam. And condemn. The meanings are exactly the same. But yet, when I say damn, people will say he's cursing. It's not the true son. This is an ignorant, unlearned generation. It is unlearned. It. They're ignorant and they don't know. And they base things on feelings. The lies mama, daddy taught them. So they base it upon that. They don't care how untrue it is. They still retain and hold on to the traditions of their forefathers. Instead of holding on to the truth of Almighty Yahweh, the wisdom of Shalom says, there's no one. He shows us two commands to love him, our neighbor, they're equal. And this is the wisdom of Shalom as he speaks to give us wisdom. He says, but the Sadiq, the righteous ones, he said, the righteous ones. They shall live olam viad forevermore. They're going to live. When this life ends, they live. They shall live forevermore. He wants us to know that the reward is with Almighty Yahweh. How rewarding it is for someone to care for you. And for you to have the privilege to care for someone else. You will care for the blatant wicked more than you do the righteous. And Yah, Yah identifies who's going to live the righteous. He says, uh, and not only will they live and he's going to reward them. He says, and he care for them. And the care of them. And the great care is with Almighty Yahweh. He cares for us. And so he cares for us in a way to what? To provoke us to love you, my friend. And to love each other and to have a great love. That's what caring is. That's what caring is. It causes anxiety. Let me read some of the superlatives and the synonyms. Affliction, aggravation, alarm, dismay. You're alarmed because you care. Why would you do that? You're upset with them. You're in dismay because they perform something that they ought not but we've been taught in our ignorance, he doesn't care. And she doesn't care. Tell me what child thinks that the parents care. And this is the ignorance of a generation. You're not going to stunt me or cause me to stumble when it comes to Pacifics. I'm the type, I would say, I don't know. I don't know. But when you open up that box, the next time you talk, you better be prepared and ready. That's a fact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is our caretaker. 
And we sing the thing, greater is the power of God that is in me. What a damn lie. Yoshua took care of all of the Talmudim before he died. He restored them. You got something in your heart against Yisra'ya and you don't restore it. You are flat out wicked, vile lie of hell. You and your house shall die in your sins. He took care of all of them, didn't he? And then when he left, they cared greatly for him. Because surely this man was from Almighty Yahweh. You see a little four-letter word like that, C-A-R-E. It has nothing of any kind of significance for its nation. Because if I ask you all to define it, you all will come with different variations of meanings. And you will make your way right. Now, there is only one meaning for the word. There is no duplicity in the word. And all of our meanings will create duplicity. It has one meaning. His name is Ikat. One name. One name. And there's one of the most prominent reasons why we don't care and don't give a damn for each other. Can I tell you? I know you will believe me. I'm not going to even ask you. You will believe me. All right, my friend. I'll tell you. Hallelujah. Are we not one body? I care for every part of my body. What I say to us when I bathe, I wash every part thoroughly. I wash between my toes. I take care of my toenails, my fingernails. I do all of that. My teeth, my hair. I will not put anything on my hair that I will not put on my face or anything like that. I won't do it. It's all the same. My hands are valuable. I'm very safe conscious when I work. Very much. And I will correct you if you're not prepared safely to work with me. You don't need to lose an eye. And the thing of it is that those that never hear that, they never come prepared. Wear your gloves. You need something on your eyes. And they never even remember. They don't even remember. I do it constantly over these many years, over and over and over, because they don't care. They think they care. If you cared for me, why put me under that anxiety? The cutting wood, brother, put on chaps. We all put them on. Put something in your ears because you don't want to lose the volume and your ability to hear. I'm not going to do my body like that. I'm not going to treat me like that. Not me. And if you work with me because I care for you, I won't let you do it. Why is it that we don't care and we frankly don't give a damn about each other? Hallelujah. Shaul writes unto the nation of Yisrael. And pronounce that we're just one body. We're not two bodies. We as husband and wife we are one. Your pains are my pains. Your agony, I may not limp, but I feel it. I see it. My heart feels it. I feel your pains. I know your pains. They cause me to be in dismay. They trouble my heart. I don't talk about it. But he tells us this. You wife, you husband. He says this to us. He commands us that there should be no kinds of schisms. This is my natural brother. I love him more than I love you. This is my sister, so I prefer her fellowship. This is my cousin. This is my friend based upon something that is natural. You don't know a damn thing. We miss the whole volume of what one is saying because we find it surprising. Oh, I read that. You didn't get wisdom. He said, don't let there be any divisions. 
Don't allow anything to create any separatism that you segregate. And you gather to perform schisms, cunning devices, a subtlety, and witchcraft. He said, let there be no schisms. And the ones that think they know something are the ones that don't give a damn. It is the truth. I don't care if I flick you, your mamba, the wife, you, you as well. It makes no difference. Neither you. We used to sing the song back in the days. Yeah, of course, we didn't sing it like that. He doesn't need no coward soldiers. And the one that was singing were cowards. So it makes me no different. We're dealing with our nephews, our being. And the power of the statement we make is that how we talk is how we walk the walk. That's the power of the statement. He said, don't let there be no divisions. Don't let no one divide you in the body. My hand here when he gets tired, this one loves it and cares so much that it will take over. You're my body that when you're weak and feeble, I'll do it for you. Don't worry about that. I got it. And so I bear the burden. We should have one another because we don't give a damn. We don't care. He said, don't let there be any schisms among you. He said, but that as the members, this is your left hand and this is your right he said, we as members of the body, and as the members of your natural body, look at the word he used, S-A-M-E, same, like unto. I show you one that is like unto the same as the first one. Listen to what he says. He says, as we, as your body, has many members. So are we members on the continent of Africa, the nation of Zimbabwe, Tanzania, and every country, Madagascar, Libya, Liberia, the land of Israel, Egypt, Mozambique, South Africa, Kenya. There are many in Europe, Britain, Spain, Finland, Switzerland, Sweden, Iceland, in South America, in the Caribbean, Puerto Rico, Cuba, our Cuba brothers and sisters, down there in Honduras, Brazil, he says we are members of the body, we should have the same care for one another. We should have the same care. We should have the same care. We don't give a damn. And we pontificate our superficial care. Well, I'm right. You are a liar. And in hell, you're going to lift your wicked eyes. We are one money. I should have the same care for her as I do her. And you, and you, it should be the same. For you and you, the same. No different. So if I correct you, I correct you and you too. You as well. She too. You too. We should have the same care. And because we don't have the same care, because there's schism and lies and frivolity and folly and your own damn stupidity that's going to condemn you. That's why we don't give a damn. We don't care. He did this. That's all right. Fall off. It makes no difference to me. I'm not like Creflo Dollar that's asking 200,000 people for each to send $300. That shouldn't awaken us. I said to my Isha this morning, I baruch ya for him asking them that. May he get every dime. You don't understand. 
Because as Yah orders the currents of the river to flow, so he orders the heart of the masters and men in any position. He calls their hearts to go according to him. So I said to my Isho, I believe I said that. I bless Yah for him doing that. The plane that's going to cost $65 million, I said to my wife, it will cost minimum a million dollars a year just to keep it in the air. And that's somewhat, uh, that's somewhat uh, not accurate. So I said, I bless Yah. Because that proves to me that Yah is sending them these damnable lying, corrupt delusions. I said, I can't get $50 from folks. And there are those that said, among us will not give one damn dime. But yet you know everything. You're wise. Will a man rob you? Yeah. You're wise. No fear of Yah. Listen to what Yah says. Hallelujah. We should have the same care. Your care for him should be the same care of honesty and decency and love that you would care for him and your father-in-law or her. No different. No different. You will not dishonor him and when you dishonor him. You won't lie to her no you'll lie to him. You won't disrespect her no when you disrespect him. But if you disrespect him, you disrespect anyone. I don't care if you don't love me. Very few folks love me. I don't have those that really care for me. And that's all right. This woman wrote me from Granada, from where Zahin Yaqub is from. I wanted to write it back and say I've met quite a few men in life. But very few men that have genuinely cared for me, but he is one from your country. And Yah shall bless that little island. And you too as well. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, you talk about it, you must care. I don't care. Do I sleep pretty well? Not pretty well. I sleep excellent. Because I know that's important to my health. So the same care that the way I treat him, because I treat her like that. And the way I treat her, I treat him the same. Treat her the same. Rafael got a $50 offering the other day. She says to me, I will give it as an offering to the assembly. I said, I don't want it. You can keep it. I don't want it. But I want to give it. I'll sign it. I said, no, no, no. You take it. The same care. It must be the same. One cares for one's brother or sister greater than they care. I care for this foot and I care for that foot. I care for that big toe just like I do that fat thumb. I care for the same. I don't let this toe, this thumb do the toe wrong. Because this is the thumb that helps when the ingrown toenail, she's kind. and This one is gentle to me and, and guides it and, and knows when the toe says ouch. He said, okay, back, back. That's how true body cares. We have learned such lies and such wickedness. We've held on to that. We are wrong. We are wickedly wrong. We should care for one another with the same care. We must and because we don't have and understand, I identified how ignorant we were and are. Because we don't have no hava, you cannot care. Because you don't understand the love of Yah, how he cares for us. Shaul again reads and writes to the people. He said, but the great unmerited Ahava, the love of Yah, and the favor of Almighty Yahweh be upon you all. I leave that with us today before Zakin comes. He said, and the reason why is because Yahweh, Almighty Yahweh, he said, I didn't do it. He uses the word P-U-T to put, not done, to be stored, to grant, to open. He said he put the same care, the same earnestness. The same earnest care into the love of Titus 
for you. He said, the way I care for you, what I sent Jesus, he's going to have the same kind of earnest care. Of course, I am ignorant, so I define the word earnest. It is the eagerness of great desire in accomplishing to promote, striving after the thing, to give great diligence, interest oneself most earnestly. When you care for me, I am your interest. You have interest in me. You care for me. When you care for someone, you interest in them. And because we don't give a damn, we don't care for each other. I'm not going to stop saying it. Because we have lived such superficial hypocrisy, lies in our life, we've made ourselves self-righteous. We get down to the road deal here. He said, there is no other man that cares for you. That's the way I care for you, but this man that I was sent, earnestly, with great passion. He has the same care that I have. If we have the heart of Joshua, we have the same care. And you prefer the wicked over the righteous. Ah. Can I read two or three more scriptures? I want to read this. Hallelujah. We think that everyone cares, don't we? Everyone has the same passion. But Shaul, as he writes unto the gathering there at Felicia, Philippians, the gathered, the scattered, he said to them, I have one that is beloved in my bosom. It's amazing that when I was being nurtured, I wanted to have the same attributes of the man. But there were things I didn't want to have that he had. I didn't want to be aggressive for money. I threw that away. I wasn't going to spend money on diamond rings and Rolex watches and, 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 and cars and Cadillacs and convertibles. I wasn't going to do that. But there were things he said that I wanted to retain. So Shaul writes unto that gathering. They long to hear his voice and see for him. See him. He said, I have, I trust this man. This is a young man. That's why we as young Achim, you have to be solid as a rock. You can't be superficial. You can't be false and pretentious. He said, I have no man. There's not one of the like Timothea that is like-minded. We don't want to be like-minded. Men don't want to be like-minded. We don't want to be my, my, my mind to be like I don't want to think like him. I'm different. I, I got something that you don't have a damn thing. You haven't lived long enough to have what I have. You don't have the knowledge of experience. You don't labor like I labor. In this book, you don't. And so I want to teach you. There's not one man that when he comes to my office, I show him this hour late. Look, look at this. I give any of y'all, any of y'all give me one scripture. One. 15 minutes, I can have a two-hour message on it. That's a fact. Anywhere out of the book. He said, I have no man that is like-minded. Listen to what he says. Who will naturally, genuinely, that's what natural is, faithfully, with sincerity, care for you. Huh? Huh? Naturally. It is what motivates his heart. He's sincere. He cares. I have no other man like-minded that really cares for you. But this man, there's no one that cares. There is no, what is that song y'all just sing? The Zachane sings, no other one like Yahweh. We must have this mind. We're going to die in our wickedness. And in hell, we're going to lift up our eyes. He said, I have no other man. So we as men and elders, we want to train the young men to be like me. I don't mind if a young man is like me. I don't care if he walks like me. He could dress like me. He could talk like me. Because I've never been about folly. I've never been a jackass and a clown. I've never been that now. That I haven't. Even in my young days, I wasn't that way. I didn't want to be like those cats. Mm -mm. Have no other man that naturally, it is innate, it is pure, that he cares for you. That he's considerate of you. That he is. And then he goes on with a beautiful statement to Yisrael. He says, although I wrote to you, because I care for you. He said, I did not for the cause that had been done the wrong. He said, I'm not telling you this because you've done wrong. 
I'm not writing to you because I know you're wrong and you're guilty of sin. That's how I'm talking to you. He says, nor for the cause of the ones that suffer wrong. I know the one that did it caused you to suffer wrong. That's how I'm writing you. He said, the reason I am writing, but that I'll care for you in the sight of Yahweh may appear when you care. You want y'all to see it. I don't care how wrong you've done. I don't care what you have done, but I want my care to be exemplatory that y'all can see it. And he will know I'm genuine. We don't give a damn. We don't realize that y'all watches us. And he said he cared for them. He said, I want our care to appear in the light of Yah, the testimony of Yahshua, that we really care for each other. That we care. And it's genuine. And that when you see me cause light to shine in your face, a light. Knowing you've been away from your wife all day and I see you in that morning. Well, I, I, I want to show you my appreciation. I want, because you care for me and I'll show how much I care for you. I don't care how I feel. I don't care how moody I am. I don't get up like that. I don't care how funny I am and how nutty I am. No. I won't let that, separ- I won't let that be a division between you and me. Hallelujah. I won't do that. Two other, three other verses I want to read quickly. It tells us this. Out of all the great calamities of Shalomo, he tells us this. They that put their batak, their trust, in Almighty Yahweh. We don't trust him. We don't trust each other. That's why we don't know each other. When you don't trust one another, you don't know them. But when you trust one, you begin. We don't trust no one. We've been taught to have distrust. We've been taught not to trust. I'm not that way. I've never distrust my wife. I would, even though I knew men that lived here were doing things corrupt, that's all right. Because they're not going to get by. And they certainly cannot corrupt the place. We that put our botak, our trust, we shall understand the truth. That's what we don't understand. We trust not Yah. We don't even trust the man that speaks to us. And he says, when you find a man that trusts Yah, he understands Torah. He says, and these are the ones that are faithful. Listen. When a man trusts Yah, he is faithful in one thing. He is faithful in love. When you trust Yah, you are a faithful lover. Now, you didn't read that one. No schisms. The schisms in your own damn wicked heart. That's why Yah showed you that. Because his preacher is going to tell you that. How about that? When you find a man that trusts Yah, he is guided by the Torah. And he is faithful, my friends, in love. He is most faithful in love. When you find a daughter that is guided by the Torah, she's faithful in love. She loves. I'll do that. Bless you, baby. She's kind. We have this damnable meanness and corruption. Always trying to get over on someone. We're allowed to get over I have never in all of my life done that in the sense when I come to any kind of spiritual journey, I wouldn't lie to get over nobody. I've never done that. I've never done that. Or in the world, I lie to play and hustle, but I've never done that. I've never. They that put their trust in Yah shall understand the truth. And such as put their trust in Yah, they're faithful in great love, and they shall abide with him. They shall abide in Yahshua. And they shall understand the free unmerited pardon. Love Ahava. They will understand the pardon of Yah. They will understand the love of Yah. And also the kindness of Yah. Because he expresses that unto his Kirushan. He watches and he cares for his elect. Do we have the mind of Yahshua? Then we should watch and care for the elect of Yah. I don't give a damn what someone has done to you or get you. You tell me that mothers, you've never been filled with anxiety with the child. You didn't throw it in the bath water, did you? You tell me the child doesn't make you dismay and angry. You tell me the child doesn't run about and talk too much. And you tell me the child is not hard-headed. But you don't kick the child out. That's care, isn't it? 
So you don't kick out each other because you don't like them. You say, ah, oh, that child. I raised no children, but I know children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your care is for us. And this is the consolation of all things. And all of this I will say today. No one could speak it in the excellence of Kephal. He says to us. He says, all your agony and your burden. He said, casting kul. All of your haradah, your care, upon Almighty Yahweh, for he cares. That's what friends are for. You can tell them your agony because they care. You can share your pains. You don't give a damn. You will ostracize and you will promote their weaknesses. And there's one thing I learned as a young man. And I said this to you, there are things that I've never said to my wife, although I trust my Achim, I've never said it to them. The things that people have told me, that even though they're gone, I've never said to anyone. Because it's one thing that if there's a great assurance he put in my heart, don't ever defy the trust. No, he didn't speak that to me, but the Torah did. Other people. Don't ever. Because if I tell you, you may just somehow tell her. And she feel comfortable telling her. And she feel comfortable telling her. And she... And I would not tell nobody. And I know some things, Mama, but I wouldn't tell nobody. I wouldn't tell nobody. You understand? Because I can see them today and they can look at me and see, if I had told somebody, it would have gotten around. And they could look at me and say, you told it, didn't you? Be the riches of Yah rest upon your.